So I see all these YouTubers, and they're using gallium liquid metal thermal compound. My plan is simple. There's another form of liquid metal that I'd like to try. So I started off by deleting my old Q9400. So I quickly found out that it had twin dual core solder dies. Why Intel can't solder one die in 2018, I can't figure out. But that's not why you're here. It's time for the secret ingredient. So the way that I look at it is that the steel portion of the JB Weld should be adequate enough to remove the heat from the CPU and transfer it to the IHS. The hardener portion of the JB Weld, I don't know what it's going to do. I don't know the thermal conductivity of that material, and I don't care. I do know that I used the proper amount per die. So I reapplied the IHS, pressing down firmly to spread the epoxy. Then I applied a 7.5 pound weight for about 3 hours for the epoxy to harden. And then checking the temperature in the room, about 75 degrees Fahrenheit was my base temperature. Before I applied the JB Weld, I tested the CPU with Prime Grid on all four cores and found that I had a temperature, an average temperature, of about 109 degrees. The Corsair H110 all-in-one that I have hooked up to this CPU doesn't even ever seem to notice that it's there. But here's the moment we've all been waiting for. The sick temps we're going to get with the new application of liquid metal thermal paste. I can't wait to start overclocking this thing farther than anything ever known to man. No, that's... that's not good. So here's my high-tech temperature chart. Essentially, it shows you that you should never use JV Weld as thermal compound. So if you delid your CPU, and you replace the tin with a different type of thermal compound, make sure you use a trusted brand. So anyways, throw a like or a dislike on this video, subscribe if you want to. Either way, I'm just gonna make more videos.